In this video, we're going to try to apply one of the concepts be behind teaching and training adults um, that was developed by uh, Edgar Dale, uh, specifically his cone of experience. Uh, the cone of experience was a way to provide um, instructional designers like uh, myself or anyone else uh, a model for gauging the most effective way to present or to try and teach information. Uh, essentially the cone of experience, and it's designed as a cone intentionally um, because of course the smaller portion of it's at the top and the larger breadth of the cone is at the bottom. Essentially what this, uh, what this uh, cone of experience teaches us is that as as learners, as adult learners, uh, we generally remember 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what you see, right? In other words, looking at pictures, watching videos, 50% of what um, they see and hear. So if you have a video with narration and instruction, 70% uh, of what they say and write, and the most important and what we're trying to achieve, and it's very difficult in e-learning, is 90% of what they do. So anytime you have an opportunity to get your learners to actually perform a task or to do something, there's a far greater chance that they'll remember that information, that that will, will stick. Um, if you simply uh, I'll give them a passage to read, as soon as they click next, basically that information is gone from their head. Um, they, if you read it to them as well, um, you know, there's a greater chance they'll remember that. But actually performing a task or doing something is probably the best way that um, adults learn. So let's close uh, the, the cone of, um, of experience or the cone of learning and see how we can apply that to this course uh, which is, uh, has a, a section to it where we're referencing a company or corporate policy. Um, I've set this up to be essentially a search and learn. I don't like calling it a search and learn. Uh, the, the course uh, page is actually, as you can see here, I'm just using a system variable to reference the actual slide name here. That's what will show up on the page when you run this course. And I have some basic instructions here. Uh, you can find the policy in question at the website. Scroll down the page until you find the link for the policy. Click the link to either download or view the policy. So what we want to provide them is a way to actually look at that website or interact with that website right here on the screen. And Adobe Captivate 8 uh, conveniently has such a feature. And it's called a web object. So you click your objects icon or button on the screen here on the main interface and select web and this will create uh, a default web object which is simply like having a browser within your browser now I'm just going to resize this so it fits on the screen and we'll just make sure it's the same width as the text here which is probably advisable um, Let's shrink that down a bit so it doesn't cover up our navigation buttons on this page. And there's a few things that you need to set within the properties panel. Uh, the first being, of course, the actual web address that you want people to go to. So we'll make sure the properties tab is selected. Click on the style button and uh, replace the address that is currently in the uh, default address something to do with adobe.com and we'll grab the web address that we want to use for this particular course right here and paste that in and you'll see it update itself there to be the appropriate web page uh, the default is to auto load which is what you want to do display and slide um, a border is fine. You can take it off if you prefer that. Scrolling, I, I recommend that you keep that checked off because, of course, if it is something that you want learners to interact with, you want them to be able to access the entire web page. 
Uh, also, I like to add a loading animation because if, if you do have a, a slower internet connection, you definitely want users to know that the page is coming um, as, to, as opposed to thinking that something's broken in the e-learning. Um, under um, options, there, there are the usual things you'd find with uh, size and shape and so on. I won't bother with that um, because I've done that myself here. But under timing, you want to make sure that this is visible on the slide in question for the rest of the slide. The default was only three seconds, so I'm updating that. That's pretty much it. So now we have this here. Uh, one thing you should know is that if you wish to preview this slide using either the preview project or preview from this slide or preview next five slides, uh, the web object won't load. You'll just simply see a white space in this case uh, where that web object would normally appear. If you want to test this functionality out, you must run it in browser, uh, either through the in browser F12 option or through the F11 HTML5 in browser option, uh, depending on, on how the course is, uh, is going to be published. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use in-browser, that's fine. And what we'll do is we'll quickly navigate to that page and we can see how this works. So just give that a moment to generate. And then I will use the navigation controls along the bottom of this page to quickly get us to the correct spot in the course. So here we are, the course is now loading in a browser. There's my title page, and we'll just quickly navigate to where we need to be. And it's the next slide, I believe, after this one, so we'll just click that. So you can see the loading animation occurred there. So now learners can follow the instructions that are on your page. They can scroll down, looking for the environmental policy in this case. There it is. They can click the link and now they've experienced, they've done the actual task of going to that website, finding the policy and opening it up. So the great news is, is that you're far more likely to have an impression on your learners by allowing them to try this task themselves. In the future they'll be able to find this policy with much greater ease it, uh, compared with um, you simply telling them where it is or uh, giving them um, some instruction in text only. Um, but you can use this for a lot of different interactions. Basically anytime you want to either provide them uh, an object like say a PDF file or anything that's available on the web uh, this is a great way to build it right into the course itself. A great advantage here is that if that policy gets updated a year from now, your course isn't broken. It's going to still take them to the appropriate web page and they will see the newest version of the policy. If you simply embedded that policy in the course as a downloadable object, it would be out of date the moment that they published a new version of that policy. So you can see the advantages of using this method. Guys, if you like the videos that I'm producing, please subscribe to my channel. And if you like this particular video, don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up.